So yesterday morning I was on Sky News, and it doesn't look like I'm going to be invited back anytime soon. At least not to Kay Burley's show. We were talking about illegal immigration, Trump and the wall, and I alluded to a story that broke a few days ago about nearly 10,000 migrants coming from Eritrea to Sicily on boats. When I said this, well, look what happened. America, if you let in too many immigrants into America, if you keep letting that border be run over by immigrants, then you are not going to have a country anymore. You are not going to have an English-speaking country anymore. You are not going to have the American culture anymore. Immigrants massively vote for large government. Your government is going to expand. Social programs are going to expand. And for people, young people like myself, we're going to get the butt of it. We're going to be ignored. They're certainly ignored by Hillary Clinton. I mean, it's almost like our leaders have completely forgotten what legal immigration is. Everyone seems to feel bad for all these illegal immigrants and all these refugees coming in on boats. What about the people waiting five years to come into the country legally? I mean, I don't know why legal immigration even exists anymore when I could just put on some bronze or get on a dinghy boat and show up on the border of Sicily or the beaches of Sicily with a Quran in hand and be accepted as an immigrant or go across the border with Moroccans and be accepted as an immigrant. No, 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 we're not saying things like that on my program. Needless to say, the host wasn't very happy with me, but her screaming racist online does nothing but devalue and cheapen the word and certainly does not constitute as an argument against any of my points. My main point being that what happened to legal migration and where's all the liberal sympathy for these people? The migrants from Eritrea that arrived in Sicily the other day were praised by the mainstream media, celebrating them starting their new life in Europe. These people weren't even refugees, though. They weren't even pretending to be refugees. They were just economic migrants coming from a country that sucks right now. And you know what? There are a lot of people trying to come from countries that kind of suck to Europe, America, or Canada. And a lot of them are trying to come there legally. They've worked their butts off, learned the languages necessary, gone to school, and want to assimilate into the culture, and are able to pay their way without the government. Yet, it is not these individuals that get to enter Western nations in hordes. It's illegals who do it and get praise from the mainstream liberal media. So why do we even have borders? Apparently, political leaders and media see their virtue signaling as more important than being fair and just to legal migrants, as well as keeping their nation secure and keeping a stable economy and a homogeneous culture. I was reading a post from a couple of years ago by an Italian man from Philadelphia who wanted to apply for his Italian citizenship. Listen to what he had to go through. Firstly, he had to obtain documents outlining his family history that were certified. From Italy, he got a copy of his grandmother's birth certificate. From Argentina, he got copies of his father's and grandfather's birth certificates and his grandparents and parents' marriage certificates. And from the U.S., he gathered together copies of his mother's, his sister's, his brother's, and his own birth certificate. For those documents, he had to drive all the way out to Trenton in New Jersey for approval from the New Jersey Department of Treasury. He also needed to track down copies of all divorce certificates within his family. All relevant documents then had to be translated to Italian and needed an apostle seal of verification from their country of origin. Additionally, problems arose when he realized the Argentinian documents needed to be approved by the Italian embassy in Buenos Aires, delaying the already lengthy process. Moreover, there was a typographical error in his mother's birth certificate, meaning he had to drive two hours back to Trenton, New Jersey to get it amended, not realizing that all requests for changes are handled by mail taking 8 to 12 weeks to complete, wasting his time even more. The entire process of collecting all the certificates, having them all verified, translated, and sent over, then finally receiving his citizenship, took him a whole three years. This poor guy never realized there was absolutely no need to waste three years of his life and thousands of dollars pursuing the legal path to citizenship. All he had to do was burn his passport and float onto a beach to be welcomed as a citizen. Italy and the EU in general have hundreds of thousands of immigration cases to deal with and hundreds of thousands of people trying to become citizens using the legal process, yet they just let people waltz across the border. No, send them back. I don't care if they look adorable in media photos. They do not belong in that country. Yes, they are real people, and yes, they have my sympathy. But the people who are waiting on five-year waiting lists to come there legally are real people as well. And some of them are coming from the exact same countries and situations as these illegal migrants. Legal immigrants should absolutely be considered first over illegal migrants on lorries looking for welfare. And you know who should be considered before both of those? 
current citizens of the country. There are poor people all over the world, and there are poor people that still need help in the first world. Governments and people living in first world countries cannot feasibly take the entire third world onto their backs. It's just not possible. You are clinically insane if you think it is. And for all you libertarians and hippies that are saying ridiculous nonsense like, borders don't exist, we're all just one human race, Sorry, you can feel free to think that all you want, but it doesn't change the fact that yes, borders do exist and are enforced by almost every single country in the world. Except apparently Western countries who give out some of the largest amounts of social assistance. Which means when people waltz across those borders, the government grows. And taxes need to go up to support more poor people. And more subsidized housing, more health plans, more English language training, schooling, and all manner of government assistance. And then those new immigrants continue to vote for larger government to keep that social assistance flowing. So no, it is not pro-big government to support borders, and no, it is not cruel. What is both cruel and foolish is to accept migrants who just hop on a boat and don't follow the legal process over families and individuals who have worked their hardest to get into a situation where they won't need government assistance and are willing to apply legally to enter a country. Stop being fooled by the media into thinking this is some adorable act of decency by a country. In reality, there are hundreds of thousands of far more worthy people that have been patiently waiting their turn while these people butt in line and are accepted purely so that governments can win votes and stay in office. It's time our governments start to put legal immigrants first and even before that, their own citizens first. Thanks for watching. Don't miss my show Standoff by clicking here to become a member.